Hello, I am Bala Jirav, Assistant Professor of Radiology at Yale University from Neuroradiology and Emergency Radiology section. This video is Introduction to Spine Radiographs. First part of this video is on cervical spine and the second part is on thoracolumbar spine imaging. In each section, you will be introduced to standard views, anatomy, systematic approach and will be shown examples where we will apply some of the concepts learned. Let's start with the cervical spine imaging. The standard views used in cervical spine imaging are anteroposterior or AP view, lateral view and odontoid or open mouth view. Let's identify some anatomic structures in the lateral view. In the lateral view, the first fully formed vertebral body is the C2 vertebra. As you count down towards the thoracic spine, always make sure the cervical thoracic junction is clearly identified. If the cervical thoracic junction is not well seen, a repeat examination or additional views will be required. Identify the C1 anterior and posterior arch. Each vertebra has a vertebral body, articular process. Between the articular process, you have the facet joints, the lamina and the spinous process. Identify the intervertebral disc space between the vertebral bodies. Identify the soft tissues anterior to the vertebral bodies and the trachea. In the AP view, the upper portion of the cervical spine is usually obscured by the overlying mandible. Identify each vertebral body and the intervertebral disc space between them. In the vertebral bodies, the superior and inferior articular process along with the facet joint is known as articular pillar. Identify the spinous process. Identify the soft tissues, lungs and the ribs. In the open mouth or odontoid view, first identify the C2 vertebral body. Identify the odontoid process, identify the C1 and C2 lateral mass. The joint space between them is known as atlantoaxial joint or C1 C2 joint. Identify the mandible. When looking at a radiograph, it is important to use a systematic approach. The approach I use is A, B, C, D, E approach, where A stands for alignment, B for bodies, C for cortical outline, D for disc spacing, E for edges and soft tissues. Alignment of the spine in lateral view is assessed by checking specific lines. Anterior spinal line is assessed by joining anterior aspect of the vertebral bodies. Posterior spinal line is assessed by joining the posterior aspect of the vertebral bodies. The spinolaminar line is assessed by joining the anterior edges of the spinous processes. These lines should have a smooth curvature. Spinal cord lies between the posterior spinal line and spinolaminar line. Also assess for the interval between the C1 and C2 called as C1-C2 space. It should be less than 3 mm in adults and less than 5 mm in children. Check the height of vertebral bodies. Make sure each vertebral body corresponds to its spinous process. Trace cortical outline of each vertebra for any fracture. The intervertebral disc space should be more or less of same height. Evaluate the thickness of soft tissues anterior to the vertebral bodies. Anterior to C3 vertebral body, soft tissue should not be more than 7 mm and anterior to C6 vertebral body, the soft tissue should not be more than 22 mm in adults and 14 mm in children less than 15 years old. Increase in the soft tissue thickness may be related to hematoma or infection. The lateral edges of vertebral body should form continuous parallel lines. The spinous process should be spaced out evenly and should form a straight line. Check the height of vertebral bodies. Trace the cortical outline of each vertebra for any fracture. The intervertebral disc spaces should be more or less of same height. Assess the soft tissues of the neck for any emphysema and lung apices for any pneumothorax, mass or rib fractures. Lateral process should be aligned in the same plane. The space between the lateral mass of C1 and odontoid process should be equal. The lateral aspects of lateral masses should have less than 1 mm of malalignment. Identify and trace entire C2 vertebra. It is difficult to evaluate C2, C3 disc space in this view. Assess for any obvious fracture in the mandible. Let's look at some examples. As I trace the outline of C2 vertebra, I can see a gap between the odontoid process and the C2 vertebral body consistent with fracture through base of odontoid process. Let's look at a different example. As I trace the cortical outline of C2 vertebra, I see a break in the C2 lamina. This kind of fracture is known as hangman's fracture. Let's look at the standard views and anatomy of thoracic spine. The standard views are AP view and lateral view. Let's identify some anatomic structures in the AP view. Identify vertebral body, intervertebral disc, the pedicle, spinous process, transverse process and the ribs. 
In the lateral view, again identify the vertebral body, intervertebral disc, pedicle, superior and inferior articular process, and the spinous process. Let's discuss the standard views and anatomy of lumbar spine. The standard views used in lumbar spine assessment are AP view and the lateral view. In the AP view, identify the vertebral body, intervertebral disc, the pedicle, the transverse process and the spinous process. In the lateral view, again identify the vertebral body, intervertebral disc, pedicle, superior and inferior articular process, spinous process and the neural foramen. Systematic approach of thoracolumbar spine can again be performed using ABCDE approach. Assess the anterior spinal line and posterior spinal line these should form smooth curvature trace each vertebral body for any height loss trace each vertebra for any discontinuity to suggest fracture identify the disc spaces they should be of same height assess the soft tissues anterior and posterior to the vertebral column evaluation of vertebral bodies in ap views can be again performed using abcde approach alignment of the vertebral body should be parallel vertebral body height should be symmetric trace the cortical outlines trace the the transverse process, trace the pedicles, trace the spinous process. The disc spaces should be symmetric. Look at the edges and soft tissues. Now let's look at some examples. In this example, you can see there is abnormal loss of height of this lower thoracic vertebral bodies. The normal vertebral body should have a rectangular shape. This kind of fracture is called as compression fractures. Now let's look at a different example. This vertebral body has loss of height anteriorly. There are also fractures seen extending from posterior aspect of the vertebral body into to pedicle, transverse process, articular process and spinous process. This fracture involves anterior to posterior aspect of the vertebra. This kind of fracture is called as chance fracture. In summary, when you first approach spine radiograph, identify if it's cervical, thoracic or lumbar spine. Identify the normal anatomic structures. Use systematic ABCD approach to identify any abnormality. Thanks for your attention.